good good evening good evening to to you once again friends and um, thank you for joining us tonight in the precious name of Jesus um, I trust and I believe that you are ready uh, for the even for the second session of the night of the evening not night evening and I I pray that you know you'll stick around because I'll be here for um, extended uh, you know period of time I might do three to four sessions today uh, based on, on, on how far we'll go because I need to ensure that the promise um, the promise that I've made with regard to uh, teaching you for these 21 days uh, of the national lockdown as we want to flatten the corona virus curve my prayer and my uh, heart is that God will um, um, help us to capture his heart during times like this, to capture his heart, you know, uh, during moments like this. And I want to welcome those of you that are joining us and those of you that are joining. In the earlier session, I just did a warm-up and I ended up, you know, doing exhortation um, and, 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 and exhorting the saints. And I love exhortation um, and, and from time to time we will have to do that. But I'm also, uh, you know, a, a lover of teachings. I love teachings more than preachings. I, I love teachings more than preachings. Um, although both dimensions are important and we've got to be balance in terms of embracing all of them but for me uh, real you know uh, believers will be birthed out of teaching so let's uh, um, do the second session tonight and um, we, we we just welcome the skype people the skype family that is joining us on skype uh, and those of you that are joining on whatsapp the different whatsapp groups and, and Facebook family and those of you who will be joining us on um, YouTube, we, we we thank you, we thank you, we thank you so very much, and we trust that God will um, uh, talk to us tonight. I want to continue on, on on the principles that I shared a little bit earlier, uh, the principles of the promised land. Last night I shared on the pro principles of the promised land. This afternoon I came in and shared a little bit on the promise and I mean on the principle of hunger and thirst. Uh, what you are hungry and thirsty for uh, is what God will fill you with in the in the kingdom space. When we start to deal with kingdom, you know, you know, you know, uh, space, uh, what we are filled with is governed. What what will, what God will fill us with is going to be governed by our hunger. The level of the hunger you have governs the level of the feeling that God will bring. Uh, so I want to bring a principle now uh, after we have studied the journey of the Israelites from Egypt to Canaan. Here they are, they are at the edge of the promised land. And now when they are edge of the, at the edge of the promised land led by Moses, Moses sent out spies. He sent out 12 spies to go in and spy the land. Now, uh, we'll, we'll get time maybe before these 21 days are over that we, we talk about the spies, the 12 spies and who was part of the spies um, and who was not part of the spies. 12 tribes of Israel had spies in, 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 in the, the group of men that Moses sent to spy the land, except the only person who was not part of the spies, the only group which was not part of the spies were the, uh, the Levites. They did not have a representative in the 12 spies. But now when the report comes back, um, there they, 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 they were 12, 10 guys who said, no, we are unable to go in and, and, you know, and, and take the land and possess the land that God has promised us. Now two guys, Joshua and Caleb, said that we are able, let us go in take the land that God has promised us, we are able to, 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 to go in and possess the land. We are able to go in and possess the land. Now, here is a very important thing that I want to start with today. Now, now in Numbers chapter 14, which is where I am I'm, I'm going to read, it says, Now, all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people went wept that night. And the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron, and the whole congregation said unto them, would that would, would that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would that we have died in this wilderness? And wherefore doeth Jehovah bring us unto this land to fall by the sword? Our wives and our little ones 
will be a prey? Were it not better for us to return to Egypt? They said to one another, let us make a captain, let us return into Egypt. Now, the principle that I want to bring to you is this, is that the Canaan that you speak against, the Canaan that you speak against, is the Canaan you will never possess. Let that sink just a little bit. If you speak against possession of the promised land or Canaan, you'll never possess it. There is a group of the Israelites that said, we are unable to possess the land. And the whole congregation believed that we are unable to possess the land except Joshua and Caleb. These are the only two people out of the 12 who said we are able. And God has to wait for this group to die in the desert and he eliminate them until a new generation rises for them to possess the land. But we're not going to get into that. But what we want to start with today is this principle, principles of the promised land. Number one, you will never possess a Canaan that you are criticizing. If you criticize and, and, and speak against possessing the promised land you'll never possess it there is a generation of Israelite, the Israelites who actually started from Egypt with Moses but they did not make it to the promised land why they spoke against possessing the land in numbers chapter 14 the Canaan you speak against you'll never possess the promised land you speak against you'll never possess the good things that you personally speak against, you'll never possess. They said that we are unable to possess that land. God has promised it, but we are unable to possess it. The deal is this. You criticize, speak against the promised land, you'll never have won. The Canaan that you criticize, you'll never possess. If you speak against marriage, you'll never have it. If you speak against children, you'll never have them. You, there are some of you who are watching me this afternoon and you are singles. And, and the singles that the singles that speaks against marriage, they'll never have it. If you speak against greatness, you'll never attain it. The greatness you speak against, the Canaan you criticize, you'll never tap into it. God will not allow you to enter into the Canaan you are speaking against. God will never, never, he will never allow you to enter into the Canaan you speak against. Now, if you speak against money, don't be surprised when you don't have it. If you speak against wealth, and I'm not encouraging the extreme love of wealth, which is unbiblical, but I'm saying if you speak against rich people, you'll never be one. If you speak against people that are doing well in life, you don't be surprised when you don't do well in that space, because God does not allow you to get into to the Canaan you have criticized, to get into the Canaan you spoke against. Watch what you say against what God has promised. God promised them the promised land, but did they all enter? No. Why? Because they spoke against the promised land. If you speak against marriage, don't be surprised when you remain unmarried. If you speak against women, don't be surprised as a man who don't have a woman in his life. If you speak against men in your life as a single lady, don't be surprised when you don't have one. If you speak against money, don't be surprised when you're broke because you are getting what you have been sowing with your ways. Death and life lies in the power of the tongue and those that love it shall eat the fruits thereof. They Canaan you possess is the Canaan you spoke well about. The Canaan you will enter into is the Canaan that you behave like Caleb and Joshua containing that space. You will never possess the space you speak against. You will never possess a dimension you speak against. Let me talk to pastors. If you speak against, you know, churches that are healthy and doing well, I know there are churches that are unhealthy and that are not of God and that have not been started by God and they are growing and doing you know well in numbers and i'm not talking about those ones but there are legit godly churches that as leaders we speak against them they are godly kingdom legit churches that are healthy and that are growing you know out of godly principles when we speak against that as pastors we will never attain that level let me say that again let me say that again the level that you speak against is the level you'll never tap into be careful what you criticize be careful what you speak against because the principle of the promised land says you cannot have the Canaan you speak against. 
I don't know what you've been speaking against. But some of you that are watching me this afternoon, you are a direct result of what you've been speaking against. You are a direct result of what you've been speaking against. What you have been speaking against, what you have been criticizing, is manifesting in the state of your life. Don't be surprised when you don't possess the promised land. Don't be surprised when your body be, become a, you know, a carcass in the desert. They said this, that our bodies will be carcass in the desert. So don't be surprised when certain things start to happen. Because with the words we say, the words we speak will govern you know, the possession of things. Not just material things. When we speak against certain anointings that are supposed to be the next levels that we step into... God does not allow us to tap into that. God does not allow us to tap into that. You speak against miracles, don't be surprised when you don't have them. I'm not talking about correcting things. I'm not talking about setting things in biblical and correct perspective. I'm talking about utter jealousy. I'm talking about utter, you know, destroying of the very same things we will need. God will not allow you to possess what you're criticizing. Let me make it worse. Do you remember the night that Jesus was going to be, you know, you know, betrayed by Judas? Uh, when they were praying at the mountain, the Bible says that a group of men and soldiers came with Judas, where Jesus and the twelve were, you know, and the other disciples were praying. Now, when they were praying there, when they were praying there, there is a man who was a servant of the high priest by the name of Malchus. Malchus was the servant of the high priest. So the man Peter took a sword. When Peter took a sword, he cut the ear of Malchus. And Jesus took the ear back and attached it back to the head of Malchus. And he taught Peter a principle. He says to Peter, those that live by the sword will die by the sword. But the most important lesson is not learned at that point in time. It's learned in the book of Acts chapter 2. In that when the day of Pentecost has fully come, the Bible says that it is Peter who stood up with the twelve and ministered the word of the Lord. Now when he ministered the word of the Lord... To the people that gathered in that setting, you know, you know, 3,000 people were born again. Now, the revelation here is this. The revelation here is this. Is that Peter, don't cut the ear that will listen to you at the day of Pentecost. Don't cut the ear that is supposed to listen to you at the day of Pentecost. Don't cut the ear that will, that will listen to you in the future. Don't be surprised, my leaders, my pastors, when our churches are not numerically growing. Some of us, we have been cutting the ears that are supposed to be listening to us, and we cut them, and we are surprised now that there is no ear that is listening to us. What ear have you cut? Whom have you cut? What have you spoken against? Now, what you have spoken against will catch up with you in the future. You will never possess the Canaan you speak against. The Israelites say, that we are unable to possess that land. We are unable to go in and take that land. And God says, okay, let the principle work against you. The principle says you cannot have the Canaan you criticize. If I were you, I will start to speak well of the things that God has promised. Legit, sound, healthy things that are scriptural and biblical. Don't criticize them. Don't speak against them because a time and age will come wherein you need to possess those things. Now, God will never and the principle will not allow you to possess them because you have spoken against them. I'm almost done for this session. I'm almost done for this session. You cannot have the principles of the promised land. You cannot have the Canaan you mock. My God. You cannot have the Canaan you mock. If you mock the promised land, you'll never have one. If you mock the promised land, if you mock Canaan, you'll never have one. A, a lot of us are actually right about now in that space that I'm talking about right now. Because we are in a space wherein we are unable to attain and you know, you know, receive certain things because we have mocked them. We have mocked them. We have mocked them. And that is working against us. We've got to repent and reverse the words that, 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 that we have spoken with regard to certain things and dimensions in God. With regard to certain things. And, and, and let me say this. Let me say this. Let me say this. Let me say this. A prophecy that you speak against that God has spoken over your life and it is legit and biblical and it is a promise. You'll never attain it because you are speaking against it. You will never harvest a prophecy you are speaking against. 
you will never harvest a promise that you are speaking against. You will never harvest what you are speaking against. The harvest you speak against, you will never have it. You will never harvest the Canaan you spoke against. Now the Israelites said, we are unable to take that land. We are unable to possess that land. And the principle caught up with them. They did not. Only Joshua and Caleb out of that generation possessed the promised land. I want you to behave like Joshua and Caleb and start to speak well and start to speak kingdom language and start to speak, you know, you know, you know what you are supposed to speak as a son of God. Number three, principles of the promised land. Number three, principles of the promised land. Number three, you'll never have what you criticize. You'll never have what you criticize. You can only possess what you speak well of. You can only possess what you speak well of. I'm talking about, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, these on the positive. If you speak well of the promises of God, if you speak well of certain dimensions, you'll have them. If you speak bad and criticize them, you'll never have them. You'll never have them. Number four. Number four. God will never allow you to receive what you don't value. God will never allow you to receive and have what you don't value. What you value says a lot. What you value. The things you regard. The things you value. The things you value. Do you value revival? If you don't value revival in your heart, you'll never tap into it. You'll never have it. Do you value signs and the wonders? If you don't value signs and the wonders, you'll never have it. Do you value divine healing? If you don't value divine healing, you don't tap into it. You don't move into it. Do you, do you value deliverance? If you don't value deliverance, you'll never flow into it. The anointing you don't value, God does not allow you to flow into it. It's as simple as that. Do, do you value teachings? If you don't value teachings, you don't flow into it. If Do you value wisdom? If you don't value wisdom, God shut that flow from you. You can only flow in what you value. You can only flow in what you value. Now, in order to become a total and a complete kingdom person, Person. Find out biblical things that are legit and healthy, correct and well interpreted in scripture and start to value them. Start to value them. Start to value them. Start to value them. As a pastor, do you value a, a church that is growing in numbers? If you don't value it, God does not open that to you. You know, as, as a king in the marketplace, do you value business success? Do you value entrepreneurial success? Do you value, you know, success? Success in the marketplace? Do you value, you know, corporate success? Do you value success in the marketplace? If you don't regard these things, if you don't value them, God doesn't give them to you. Why should God give you what you don't need? Why should God waste dimensions in you that you don't need? Why should you? Why should you? Why should you? If you reject it, if you don't value it, if you don't take it serious, if you don't embrace it, if it does not mean anything to you, God will not reveal it to you. God will not show you. God will not show you. God will not show you. The things that means nothing to you are going to be revealed by the value you attach to them. The, the, the things that mean something to you you attach value to them. If you value something, you will attach you will attach time to it. The time that you spend with something reveals and says a lot actually about you. If you value somebody, you spend time with them. If you value God, you spend time with him. The time that you spend on someone, the time that you spend with someone says a lot about you. The money you spend on something says a lot about you. If you value something, you spend money on it. If you value something, you spend time with it. So this, there are a number of ways in which God can determine whether you value something or not. And now he does not allow you to have what you don't value. If you don't value it, if you don't value the talent that God has given you, the Bible says that there are three people who were given talents. One was given five talents, one was given three talents, the other one was given one. Now the one who was given one talent, he took it and buried it on the ground and 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 never did anything with it and it was taken when jesus explained that parable he says that 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 
talent that was given to that man was taken away from him. What you don't value, God takes away. What you don't value, God takes and give it to somebody who values it. A man who used five of his talents to get another five talents was given even more. He who have will be given even more. He who have and does not value it, it will be taken away from him. There are people we don't value and when we don't value them, they are taken away from us. And sometimes we only start to see their importance and value when they are no more and when they are no longer with us. When we don't value certain graces, they get withdrawn from us. When we don't value certain people, they get withdrawn from us. When, when the Jewish people could not value Paul, he was taken away from them and he was given to the Gentiles. What we don't value, what we don't value it will be taken away from us and given to them that values it. He came to his own and his own did not value him and he was taken away from them and given to other people. What you don't value, God makes sure that you don't have it. Because the dimensions of God are not going to be wasted by people who don't value them. God can only allow you to have what you value. Few, one, few things and then I close. Friends, you'll never have what you attack. You'll, God does not allow you to possess what you are attacking. God will not allow you to access what you are attacking. If you attack certain things, if you attack certain promises, if you attack certain doctrines, you don't benefit or you don't get them. If, if you attack certain truths and certain principles, certain things, God does not allow you to get them. If you, if you, if you, if you attack certain things, God does not allow you to get them. So be careful what you're attacking, especially my Facebook friends. There are, num there are a number of days that, you know, Facebook will go on and on with attack on certain godly dimensions that are kingdom, that are legit, that are genuine. But we will go on and on and on and on and attack them. And when we are done with attacking them, God does not allow us to access and have them until we repent and change our attitude concerning those dimensions. Let me close. Let me close. Let me close. You've got to consider what is it that you've been attacking. Consider what is it that you've been speaking against. Consider what is it that you have been, you know, bedmouthing. Some of us, we bedmouth church growth. Some of us, we bedmouth deliverance. Some of us, we bedmouth miracles. Some of us, we attack even people, genuine men and women of God that are flowing in these dimensions. We attack them. And let us not be surprised when these dimensions and streams don't flow in our lives. It is based on what we have been doing. It is based on what we have been saying. Be careful, friends. If you attack growth, you will never have one. If you attack money, you will never have it. As much as money is governed by different principles and, you know, and, 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 and different truths and, and, and all of that, I understand that very well. But one of the principles that governs money is that if you speak against money, it walks away from you. If you speak against certain things, they will walk away from you. It's not me, it's the principle. It works like that. It works like that. It works like that. If you cut the ear of Malchus, you, you, you are cutting the ears that are supposed to listen to you. There are ears that are supposed to listen to us, but we are cutting them now and the time will come in the days ahead and in the days to come when in when you rise up now in the days of your prominence when you rise up with peter you will discover that there are no ears that are listening to you because you've been cutting them before you 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 know you rise on the day of pentecost on the day of pentecost peter rose up and three thousand people were born again i am convinced even though the Bible did not say this, but the principle is this. The principle is this, is that don't attack the ears that will listen to you in the days to come. Don't attack what you'll need in the days to come. Don't reject. That's why the prophetic is very important because when you start to flow in the prophetic spirit, some, you, you will relate well with people even though right about now they don't look like they can become kings. Even though they don't look like they can become kings. But you know, when you are sensed that this is the David. When you sense that this is the next king, you will relate well with him. Don't relate badly with David now that he is looking after the sheep. You know, 
days are coming when the same David who has been in the bush looking after the sheep will sit on the throne. So when you have the prophetic heart, when you have the prophetic spirit, it will help you to discern the things that God has laid on people. Sometimes we reject people because right now they don't look like they can amount to anything. Right now they don't look like they can achieve anything in life. Right now they don't look like they're going nowhere. But when you sense the, dis the destiny of a man in his heart, when you sense what this man is having in his heart, you will start to relate them well. You will start to relate well with them because you are not relating. Listen to me. You are not relating to them based on where they are. You are relating with them based on where they are going. You are not destroying, you know, the ears that you that you will need on the day of Pentecost. So relate well with people and don't throw them away and now want to reconnect them when they are now in their prominence. Relate well with Joseph now because when you throw him away now, you will need him when he is already the prime minister of Egypt. So if I were you, I will desire what Paul spoke about that let us desire spiritual gifts and one of the gifts that we need to desire earnestly is the gift of discerning of spirit wherein you will discern destinies. You will discern where people are going. You will discern where a nation is going. So there, are, there, are, there are men and women who are not godly, who are not, you know, you know, who are not prophetic, who are not discerning, but they are able to read the signs where the world is going. And when they read, they start to invest towards that direction. Even if it does not look like it, they start to invest towards the direction where things are going. So now, as kingdom people, as sons of God, we need the prophetic. We need discerning of spirit. We need the ability to discern, to discern where things are going, to discern where people are going, so that now we start to relate well going that direction. You treat David well now when he's not the king. He will treat you well when he became the king. Jesus said that those that suffer with me right now, when we suffer with him now, we will also rule with him. When you suffer with people now and stick around them now when they have nothing, when they have no name, when they have no property, when they have no material things, when they step into their prominence, they will also relate well with you. Now, this is very, very important. This is very, very important. God does not allow you to possess the Canaan you criticize. Speak well of the Canaan you are going into. Speak well of the Canaan you are going into. Don't disadvantage yourself by speaking against the Canaan you are to possess. The Lord bless you. 20 past 6. We are coming back by half past 6 and do another session. We want to uh, bombard you with session after session because we could not meet in the morning. And I want to thank you, uh, friends, those that have been you know, with us since we start. We're talking about the principles of the promised land. Welcome, Charles Mukazi. Unfortunately, you just came when we are closing. Apostle, uh, it's good to see you. And um, I'll see you just now. Uh, I'll come back in 10 minutes time. But after 6, I'm coming back. And then we'll do another session. We're just breaking down principles that governs the promised land. What to possess and what you possess and what you will not possess. The Canaan you speak against is the Canaan you'll never possess. You criticize Canaan, you'll not have it. Criticize marriage, you'll not have one. Criticize miracles, you'll never have them. Criticize children, you'll never have them. So be careful what you speak bad about now before you possess them, before you can help them. Singles, be careful what you say about marriage because it will be governed by Numbers chapter 14 principles. The things you speak against, the canon you speak against, you will not possess it. God bless you. I love you.